Yeah? We're live? Like we're live streaming. Is it working? Okay. So maybe this isn't working here, but here we go. All right. Yep. Woo. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to Alley Vision. Here we go. Alrighty then, everyone. We're gonna do a. There we go. There we go. That's good. Okay. All right. So uh, we're gonna do a little landscape painting today. We're gonna blow this painting up. This is our example. It's uh, mountains and a foreground with nice chartreuse colors and a big fancy sky that kind of I'm working on this perspective thing where you know when you take a picture up high and you use the panorama view and how it makes everything at the top of the camera lens kind of look like it's bowl shaped that's I'm actually going for that effect so let's get that started today Glad you're here. So I'm going to leave it off to the side here for a little bit because the camera tends to autofocus like crazy and do weird stuff. All right. So with this one, we're just going to start uh, at the top of the painting. We're going to lay in that blue color. And we want to start with the shape. So let's sit this so I don't splatter paint on it. And that's ultramarine blue. And this is cobalt, but it's it's a lighter color in the violet shade. And this is the cobalt in a darker blue. It's more of the red instead of the violet. Hope everybody's having a good weekend out there. It's really beautiful in Portland, Oregon today. Super gorgeous. But it usually is here in paradise. In the summertime anyway. Some, some, summertime. I'm going to add just a little bit of cerulean just to break it up when we get in there. And this is like my most favorite. It's cobalt teal. And we'll throw in a little violet, prism violet, because you know. Stuff here. All right. So we're just going to shape it. This is a 20 by 20 square back stapled canvas. My paints are mixed this time because I've been doing large works. This mix is a little bit different. Um, it's three to one, so one part paint three parts Floetrol and uh, about a half ounce of water because I'm using squirt bottles and so that gives me the I don't know the right exact consistency that I want it also doesn't do, it stretches the paint without stretching the pigment and we're just kind of like 
encouraging it. It's not hard. Just moving it around. All right, so I need a little bit more. This is the phthalo blue. And a little bit more cobalt in the light one. And see that teal kind of shows up as dimension, but not too much. No white, because white in this portion would ruin the effect. All right, so there's the first layer. I'm gonna encourage everything off to the edges. It's okay if it's not a perfect situation just yet, because it all works out in the end. I'm gonna make that a little bit more correct. So that was just the ultramarine blue and the and a little bit of purple, actually a metallic purple, because I like the way it gives me cells. That's how we get cells in our work. We don't use any additives or do any torching. Actually, I don't even really tilt that much anymore. I so, still tilt. Yeah, Bill's he, Bill's doing some really interesting, great things with extreme tilting, is what he calls it, or radical tilting, isn't that what radical. you call it? Radical, radical tilting. Radical yeah, tilting. It's totally radical. Ding, 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 tilt. <laughs> so that allows. Well, how you get so, there? It's that you do. Yep. All right, now that's a little bit better shape. All right, always got to be keeping thinking about your composition. So the next layer is kind of a, la a cloud layer, would be the highest cloud layer. So I'm going to use some of this awesome metallic white because mm -hmm. it creates these really awesome dramatic cell cells. When you use metallic paint with a flat or a more matte paint um, right next to each other, they will always create cells, always. It's just a, 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 v a viscosity thing. So I'm just picking up the paint on the edge and letting it drag along here and that's it I mean it's it's a simple move doesn't matter if there's blue on the bottom of this it'll add dimension and you just bring those clouds up so transition transition yeah and kind of work that the that's only thing that you really want to work is that line that's mm -hmm. obvious mm -hmm. and just lay that one right there See, and the metallic white does this awesome with the, it makes these terrific. Yep. Oh, I get so happy. I get so happy. Oh. Bada bing. And then you're going to do a little flip here. A little flip curly. Because, you know, the clouds. Okay, so there's our first layer of clouds. Now we're going to, we're going to do some sunset colors today because, you know, um, if anybody hasn't noticed, I really like painting sunsets. So, or sunrises, one man sunrise and another man sunset. There you go. So we're going to add in our, our darker colors here first because that's the way it would move in the world. And that's that prism violet again. Man, do I love that stuff. Oh, it's one of my favorite colors. Well, actually, I don't have a non-favorite color. I like them all. We're going to move... I think we're going to move into a little bit of crimson here on this layer. Crimson? Well, the crimson. Crimson, I say. Or actually, I grew. Okay, so it's primary magenta. That's uh -huh. what. I, that's what we're doing. <laughs> that's what I thought. I knew it. I knew it. Sneaky magenta. Now we're going to add crimson. See, but crimson is a. It'll, it's a takeover color. It'll just like you don't need any hardly any of it because wherever it shows up, it'll be extreme. So we're starting to bring our bowl down here. And then I'm going to use some really bright magenta here. You're just directing the eye and you're using color to build composition. So there's that in your design. You can use any colors you want to use. Well, of course, well, do your thing. 
Can I have this clava try? So again, we're just gonna move it. We're just gonna like drag it along and make them paint Mary. And pretty much da, 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 da. You can see that how that crimson really jumps at you. Mm -hmm. And you just direct it. See a bare canvas, just grab the paint and pull it off that way. So I'm going to grab this purple right here, kind of bring it over because I got a spot there. And I got a spot over here. There so go. you can blend your uh, colors and your layers. Mix them together. Grab that white and bring it down into your bowl. So we need another cloud layer. <clears throat> We're going to use that metallic white again. It's a pretty good go-to on these top layers. It's a go-to. At the bottom you want to have a more calm layer so you use a regular flat white. Hope everybody's having a good time out there today. I would love to see what you guys are painting or if you're trying to do these techniques. We would love, love, love to see what you come up with. We, all the time when we're doing live events, I say all the time, you know, I think pore painting is a lot like open source software. We're all making this happen. It's the collective of us as humans, creative beings, that we are learning and sharing and growing and finding out new things together. God, could it get any better than that? I just really don't think so. All right, so there's your clouds. We're going to put in some uh, yellows and oranges now, but we're going to do a little thing that I've learned here. You might like it. It's a little tip. I use neon pink at this point. But it's such a lightweight color. It just barely stands up to anything. It just disappears. So, and it's not really the right color itself, but it's the closest thing. So, what I've learned, here's the tip, metallic orange. That's right, the orange. Where's the metallic orange? Hold on. Aren't you glad I didn't say bananas? There we go. There it is. So, it's metallic orange and neon pink. Man. It makes the most perfect peachy, peachy king. peachy king color you ever saw. It's very vibrant. The peach and the pink uh, of it stands out really well, and it holds up to the layering. You can see I used a lot more orange than I did pink. And on the bottom of that, I'm going to put this primary magenta. See, and that's another pink but with a little bit of red in it so it's got that red purple color referring back up to your upper layer remember it's composition with color so again just going to drag it around look at that pink oh yeah oh yeah get some cells over there huh mm -hmm. it's cellular to the cellular man Go ahead and go over your uh, cells. The white will come back and do its work for you. You'll love it. That metallic white, you just can't go wrong with it when you're making clouds. Go ahead and swoop it all around. So we're moving on to the yellow layer next. I'm not going to put a whole lot of clouds in this particular layer. Just a thin and flat white. It just helps things move. Got a spot over there. All right. Yellows. <clears throat> yellow. Yellow, yellow, yellow. Okay, so uh, this is uh, yellow oxide. It's, it's more of an earth color, but it's perfect in the skies when it mixes with the other yellows. It gives depth and dimension. To the underside of this cloud layer which it would have in the sky you would have a layer of dimensional darker yellows against the pinks as they fade into oranges I love sunsets 
and we're going to use this is just a regular flat brilliant clogged clogged clogged, clogged. <laughs> Clogged. It's clogged. Here you clogged. go. Here you go. Beware of my clogs. Ah, oh, thank free you. Free. Free. Thank you. Wow, uh, you're so handy. It is not breathing free. Oh, it was. Where's the little thing you had? I don't want to use that. It's right there. Technical difficulties. Uh -oh, uh oh. There we go. Sometimes that happens. It's a lot better than having seven bajillion cups that you. Oh boy, that didn't work out the way uh -oh. I wanted it to. Oh my goodness, you're going to have a son in there now. <laughs> well, now. This painting is now called Cosmic Fireball. <laughs> <laughs> Well, what you know, you things happen. Okay, we're it's moving on. <laughs> we're gonna make that work. You know, you're not. You, you think okay. you're. You think you're in control. And the yeah, universe just okay. laughs at you. Says, "Hey, by the way, are you paying any attention at all?" No. Oh, good. Cause look, it's all. It's all good. We'll just grab it. Just grab it and move it. And just grab it. it. You can always just grab the squeegee and squeegee it off. Oh it. gosh, no, we don't have to go to such extremes. It's a happy little accident, right? Now it's a, it's a sun. It's a sun. Now we have a sun. Ta-da! Because this painting wanted a sun. Good. Stay away from your blue. Because you will get green. So, we're just going to grab that. <laughs> All right. We're working it. It's no big deal. There we go. See? Hey. That's not bad. That's not bad. Now, let's go back to what we were doing. So, we grab it here just underneath the, the white layer and push that ahead of the yellow. And you're going to stop right at the edge of the paint and see how that yellow gives you a, a dimension thing. It also adds light that looks real. Looks like real, man. So we'll do that just right over here again. Grab it right there in front. Push that white line. Pick it up, drag it, and then drop it off. I'm going to grab it a little bit lower here because I want a little bit more yellow in this one, the brighter yellow. I'm just going to push, 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 and then drop it off. Well, there you go. Let's mitigate that just a little bit more. Keeping that yellow away from the blue at this point. There we go. Okay. Well, that's a very interesting sky, for sure. I'm putting in some clouds now, and I'm being a little bit more careful with my bottle. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Live and learn. Uh huh. Squirting for certain. Squirting. Okay. So really it's just a lot of layering of colors, mixing things, um, letting the chemistry, uh, the chaos, chaos chemistry, chemistry happen, knowing your materials, play around, do your studies first. What? Who are you, materials? Who are you? All right. We're going to start to flatten this out because here, here about right here, we're going to put in a mountain and foreground. So. This layer is more about spreading the light in the sky, directing the eye. Upwards, but in a more flat manner, like you would see it in the sky. So I'm actually pushing down into the paint. And my angle is at about, I don't know, I guess it's 45.
drop it off. Let's do a big fluffy cloud right there. Big fluffy one. Yes, I love fluffy clouds. Don't you? Who doesn't love fluffy clouds? I mean, come on. Let's make this one a little bit more fluffy too. You just grab it at the top with the edge of your knife and drop it off. Stretch it out a little bit. So the center of the painting could use a little bit more light and a little less action there. So we're going to drag some up there and we'll do it over here too. We'll just grab this little spot. Oh, now isn't that cool? Very psychedelic at this moment, but it will become more realistic here in a second. So when your knife is dirty, you're going to get the bottom edges of your, your, you want that. In this technique, you want your knife not to be perfectly clean all the time. You want a little bit of transference of colors, except for your danger colors, of course, which would be your yellow and your blue layer. Because there's no reason to have green in the sky unless you are getting some tornadoes or something bad. Well, maybe we'll paint one of those one day. We'll do some stormy skies. That's a that's a goal. I haven't done that yet. Let's do that. All right. So we've got this big pile of white down here, playing around in the yellow, gives everything a nice glowy look. But I'm looking up there on that blue, and I think I'm gonna take this white and just make this a little bit more dramatic. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. Now it's clean. I touched yellow. Hold on. Pull back. Tease it out there. Well, it doesn't want to go. That's all right. Just pour more white in there. Lay your knife on it, 90 degrees, right in the middle of it, and then slowly pick it up and move. Yeah? Yeah. See, as the chaos chemistry continues to work, you have to go back into the upper layers and kind of uh, zhuzh them a little bit because the cells will do too much work and you'll be like, oh, holy crap, that's just crazy looking. So you just grab them and move them around a little bit more. It's really a matter of taste. You do you, boo. You do you. All right. This is a little bit of a secret thing that I do to make the landscapes glow. This is Naples yellow and it's flat. We're going to build that mountain layer. That's what we're doing. This is the break between the white. I'm actually going to push it in. Like I had some blue on there. Yeah, that's cool. That's all good. Okie dokie. You'll see why that Naples yellow works here in just a second. So I use a light blue violet with pearl. So that iridescent medium or pearl stuff. I have pearl both. Pearl. So it's it's probably the pearl though if I wrote pearl on it. All right, here are your purple's mountains, Majesty. Above thy fruited plains. We're gonna be do, doing the fruited plains here in just a minute. Fruited plains. So a nice big generous layer of that. Um, I have been doing a new thing lately, where I use cerulean blue. 
just a just a little bit at the end of this it gives depth to the mountains when you pull them out because it'll really pretty much hide and sink it's another one of those those colors that doesn't really stick around it but it does its job and then i've been doing uh some of that prism violet man god i love that color it stands up though so you got to be careful with that and uh <clears throat> of late i've been putting in a black line black line Okay, there's your mountain layer. That's it. That's all. That's how hard mountain layers are. Okay, and uh, now we're going to put together a little cup here. We're going to do a ribbon pour for this bottom. I like the um, randomness of a ribbon pour for land. I start off with black. I don't know if you guys can see me on my end frame. Yep, you're in frame. Okay. And... A good, generous amount of that. <clears throat> this is chartreuse. Where is it? This is uh, Prussian green. It, like, it plays so nice with these this particular layer. And then we start in with some earth colors. Gonna have some gray in there. This is a, a nice terracotta sandy color. It holds up pretty nicely in the in the pour. It's your burnt sienna, but I put some pearl in it so that it gives cells. I usually put a shot, a little bit of magenta and a tiny little bit of crimson. Remember that crimson? Crimson. But you may have some red on your heels, you know, you never know. I'm sitting clover. Add a little bit more of that. Sh I love the chartreuse. It's it's just my chartreuse favorite. Chartreuse rocks. I love it. I'm going to add in another layer of black. I'm going to do some earth yellow, which is the uh, oxide yellow. Plays nice with the black. Always sells nicely for me. This is Earth Red. Earth Red. Earth Red. The Prussian's really beautiful in every color layer. I love that one. And looking for that. A little bit of violet. It will play nicely. And some gold. Because yes. A little more burnt sienna. Violet and gold. And burnt umber. This one also has pearl in it. And then layer that with some black. I don't know if I could find the bronze. Bronze, there's a. That's not what I want. Bronze. Oh, there it is. And a healthy shot of bronze. In the tiniest bit of green color shift. Seriously, that stuff is crazy. I can barely handle it. Let's do it. So that's the mountain, or the foreground, and you know what I mean. that sucker out Mm. 
<clears throat> I can't talk. I need water. I'm back filling with the black. I do that on purpose. I don't want the cup to really um, fill the whole canvas. It gives a better effect at the end here. You'll see why. Water. Thank you. Oh, appreciate it. I'm about to die. Alrighty then. There's our chartreuse layer. And your extreme foreground. Alrighty then. Let's get our knife. Not that one. Okay. Okay, it's the little one that I wanted. This is the big one, and this is the little one. Okay, let's do some mountains. So you have that glowy layer of yellow right there, and it separated your white, and it pushed it up, and it made a cloud layer all by itself with the weight of the paint. So now we're just going to go right into that yellow edge, and we're going to drag it down into the purple, and then we're going to go straight down, into your purple. And drop it off. Now for some mountains, I'm just going to take this piece right here and push it up and then drag it out. Drop it off somewhere. a hill. Again, just pick it up and move it around. Make a valley there too. The Naples yellow works great with this specific color and it mixes with the white and it creates these really great little ravines and areas. I just, I really like it. So I got a little bit of black and purple on that one on the edge of my knife and I wanted it. So I just drug down into it and then brought it up to the top. It's just color and it's so easy. Let's make this a little bit of a saddleback mountain here. And then let's raise this peak way up. Grab it. Cut that plane and create the crevasse. Isn't that how they say it on the nature shows? Crevasse. Crevasse. He's entering the crevasse. All right, so there's your mountain layer. Okay, and they're a little bit snowy and they're a little bit far away and there's like stuff going on and it's pretty freaking awesome. So we're going to leave it alone. That's the one thing that you got to kind of learn as you go on this particular technique is that mm, playing is fun but it's dangerous okay so these are your your far away hills you know as they come down from the mountains right and if you remember that cerulean blue is is underneath here it already you can't see it it disappeared but you know it's there so you push your knife into it 
and then drag it out and drop it off. See, there it is. And you can do it the other way too. Push in and then drag it up the mountain and drop it off. You know, create terrain. But you do you. Whatever works for you. I do. I do me. You do you. If you think it's too much, you, you just go back in on. and pull it down. I think these are really far away, so we're just going to drag them out. Keep that. And that looks like a natural valley, so we'll let that stay and just maybe make a hill right here. Connect your land. And I think we need a hill over here too. Hey, there's that blue. Being so handy. Coming out at just the right moment. There we go. Alright, so now you got some banded hills here. You got some depth and dimensions going on. You got some craggy hills and stuff happening in your mountain. Of course, you will futz and take your time. I'm trying to kind of go a little fast here so you guys don't get bored. Yep. Hopefully you're not bored. Nope. Somebody tell me you're not bored. Oh, yeah. Okay. Out, right? All right. Yeah, those are pretty good, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so now we're just going to move into our foreground. We're going to blend all these layers together. We're almost done here. Nice. So right here you have that black layer that was in there. That's your last black layer, the first edge of your ribbon. You're going to move into it and straight down. Let's come over here. I like the way that ribbon looks, so we'll come over here and inside of it and bring down a grassy knoll because you've got green in the cup, but it stays underneath all the metallics and the earth colors. You just have to drag it out. You want to work all of your layers so there's rocky terrain everywhere in your mountains or maybe it's a desert maybe you've got snow all the way down and it's not a springtime valley for you whatever you do you boo whatever works for you it's your painting you can do anything you want this is what i'm doing so i'm just actually moving a little bit of what was there just to enhance it i'm not really doing a whole lot because it was a really good ribbon I'm going to start working in. I see all of that worked out by itself. I don't have to touch it. That's like, yeah. like don't touch it. Like, leave it alone. Don't that all worked it. out great. So uh, now we're just going to work this very bottom layer. First, let's get all of it married. Push it to the edge. There you go. There we go. Get it all married together, all the paint edges touching. Give yourself a base here. Alrighty then, now I'll show you why we put those stripes in. I'm sure you can guess already, right? Very edge of the ribbon is right here. This is your black layer and these are the layers that we put in underneath. We're going to grab that layer. And we're going to create a nice vista from both sides. This one runs into this one though. It's hidden behind that one. In my world, anyway. And then I'm going to take this green. I'm going to float some of it up there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Grass is always greener. Yeah, good. Oh. And I'm just going to mix it a little bit right there. Going right through the chartreuse and just basically letting it do its thing. See, there's your hill. There's the light. 
So let's grab that distinguishable line and pull it back out here. Okay. And take this edge, bring it down. Bear the light. This hill over here is doing its own thing by itself, doing great. These colors tend to do that. See, you can use that to create light in this hill. It gives you dimension. Things, some things are brighter and closer and darker because they're closer, so. But it gives you a nice shape. Yeah, See? Go. Looks great, babe. Now we're just going to drag these out right here at the very edge and create those bright shapes over here. Reach up there, grab it straight down. And drop it off. Special delivery. And that gives you a sense of rock and terrain. You rock, babe. <laughs> The punning never stops here at Alley Vision. Punish much. It's the punishment. Oh, edges, edges. Okay, yeah, edges are super important at this stage because this is your last chance to do any tinkering and and stuff with your and image. You, unless you're gonna frame it, you better make sure you got a nice wrap around edges. That's one of the features of pore painting is getting that wrap around edge. So. I want this hill to be a little bit more defined. Don't waste too much paint on this portion of the need to watch out for these little these little closer head things, man. Now I think you're just going to touch the edge of the painting, next thing you know you get the little cap right in the middle of your wife's painting. Not at all. Edgy. So since all that's in the black when it dries at the end, um, it'll it'll pull down, but the 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 brightness of the green will remain. All right. Well, I hope you guys had fun. I hope you enjoyed it. Would love to hear from you. If you do your own um, using this technique, please tag us so we know where to go and see you. We want to see what you do sure you'll do something fabulous because uh, you're an artist everyone's an artist it's just a matter of practice and anybody can do it anybody and I can't wait to see what you what you do so I guess that's gonna be it for me today and I hope you guys all have a wonderful weekend I'll see you next Saturday Right here, same bat channel, same bat time. Love you all. Thank you so much for being here. Good job, yeah. Super okay. glad that we are all alive today, together. Thank you. Let's straighten that mountain out a little bit. Straighten that mountain out a little bit. All right, you guys. I'm actually going to quit. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we got to get ready to go. Yeah, we got some stuff we got to do. But, you know, I think a little bit more snow. Yep, a little more snow. Just real quick. You just know what you're doing. There we go. All right, everybody. Love you. See ya. See ya. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.